Just like electrons can transition between energy states inside an atom, the actual nucleus of that atom can also transition between different energy states. Now, when the nucleus of an atom transitions from a higher in energy excited state to a lower in energy ground state, it usually releases electromagnetic radiation with very high frequency values, sometimes even much higher than the x-ray and these types of electromagnetic radiation that is released when our nuclei of atoms transitions between energy states is known as gamma radiation or gamma rays and the frequency values range from about 10 to the 18 to 10 to the 19 Hertz and sometimes even higher so basically let's look at the following diagram that that describes what is taking place. So we have the nucleus of an atom in a higher energy state. So the asterisk symbolizes our excited state. When our nucleus transitions back to our lower in energy state, the ground state, it releases energy and the energy is usually very high because this type of electromagnetic radiation known as gamma radiation symbolized by the Greek symbol gamma has very very high frequencies and remember the energy of any photon depends on the frequency of that electromagnetic radiation. Now in contrast to electron transitions which generally release photons of low energy about one electron volt nuclei of atoms tend to release photons of very high energies ranging from kilo electron volts to mega electron volt. Now this type of reaction in which our nucleus essentially releases a gamma ray is known as gamma decay. So basically we have a nucleus that is in an excited high energy state given by the asterisk that decays into a nucleus that is in the ground state or lower in energy and in the process that releases photons of electromagnetic radiation. So basically this electromagnetic radiation known as gamma rays have very very high frequencies and carry a lot of energy. Now the question is how exactly does the nucleus of an atom actually get to the excited state in the first place? So there are many ways by which our nucleus can get to the excited state. One way is by a violent collision with another atom. So if they collide and enough energy is transferred our nucleus can actually jump to the higher state and when it jumps back it releases our gamma ray and undergoes the gamma decay. Now another way by which our nucleus can jump to the excited state is by the way of radioactive decay. So radioactive decay can create an atom in the excited state. So let's look at the following beta negative decay. So we have some arbitrary atom basically undergoes a beta decay. It releases an electron as well as a neutrino forming an atom that has one more proton. So it has a positive charge. And usually when this takes place, this atom formed <coughs> This atom form is in its excited state. So we can see what's taking place by looking at the following energy diagram. So we begin with the following atom. This atom undergoes a beta decay reaction releasing our beta negative particle and forming the new atom which is lower in energy. But this atom is usually in its excited state and it can further decrease in energy by by basically transitioning to the ground state and this generally releases gamma radiation or gamma rays. So we see that following our, our beta decay, a gamma decay can actually take place assuming that this atom form is in its excited state. 
Now, recall that if we examine the electromagnetic radiation spectrum, we see that the frequency values for X-rays and for gamma rays coincide, so they overlap at some points. So the question is, how exactly do we differentiate between gamma radiation and X-rays, between gamma rays and X-rays? So gamma rays are that type of electromagnetic radiation that describes when our nucleus transitions between states and releases radiation. So that we call the gamma radiation. However, when electrons transition between energy states, if they release energy or electromagnetic radiation with very high frequencies, that type of radiation we call X-ray. So, once again, the photons produced in gamma rays or gamma decay have no charge. Now recall that X-rays and gamma rays have frequency values that overlap or coincide at certain locations on the electromagnetic spectrum. So what exactly differentiates X-rays from gamma rays? Well, gamma rays are used to describe photons released when nuclei of atoms transition between energy states while x-rays are used to describe the interactions between electrons inside atoms.